Hi, I'm Nal Donato, artist and designer. Now, in my previous two videos, I shared my favorite black and white art supplies. And today, we're gonna bring in some color. As you can probably tell from my outfit, red is my favorite color and one of the colors that I use the most in my art. So I'm going to share some of my favorite red, bright red art supplies and show you examples of how I use them in my sketchbooks and mixed media art journals. And no matter what your favorite color is, you will probably be able to find that in your favorite color as well. And some of the art supplies are gonna be repeated from the previous videos, but there is a couple of ones that are unique to this video. So even if you watch the previous two, uh, watch this one too, and maybe you discover something new. My first favorite red art supply is the Pentel art brush or the Pentel color brush. Now, like the other Pentel brush that I've shown you in the previous video, it has a synthetic bristle tip, which means it's similar to using a regular paintbrush, not like the felt tip markers that have like a pointy flexible tip that are also sometimes called brush pens, although I don't really think they are brush pens. Like I think that term is kind of misleading uh, because that's basically just a marker tip that's kind of flexible, uh, but this is the real, real brush deal. So uh, you can use this one on its own. So for example, this is one a sketchbook page where I've drawn these kind of dually details with it. And you can see from this example that you can do a variety of marks. So there are very thick lines uh, which are done with a more harder pressure. And then there are all these tiny little fine lines, which I did by you know barely touching the paper with a brush. And this is really what I mostly use the this kind of brush for, to make the kind of these little expressive doodles, uh, which are very fluid. And um, I, I really like this um, kind of the way that you can easily uh, vary the line between thick and thin. And I think this um, looks very, very cool. So another example I have here, this is where I've kind of covered more area with this pen. So although there are some fine lines here in the middle, this a larger area is covered entirely with red. And I also like to add backgrounds to my uh, sketches, which I do with black and or gray brush pen, uh, like this one here. Also have something here, these little doodles uh, made with a fountain pen. So I tend to use this both, both for detail and for uh, kind of this uh, covering the page with a wider area. Uh, and in that way I can quickly add color and I think it adds a very nice contrast to the drawing. Uh, as opposed to just black and white. And as you can see it, it's very saturated. It's very strong. So that is like its actual color while undiluted. But here on this drawing below, this little pink area in the ear, that's actually the same brush pen, but instead of painting the whole area, I painted a bit of red here at the very bottom where you can see that the color is a bit stronger. And then I used a wet brush to kind of push the pigment further and then created this pink, uh, kind of the soft look. So you can use it strong, undiluted, and you can also use it more like watercolor. And uh, the way Pentel advertises it, it advertises like the whole set that you can use and mix colors and create a variety of shades, but also you can buy them by piece, I only have the red one and the gray one. I, did, I don't buy sets of these things. So that's basically uh, how that works. Do I have, hmm, there was something that I did just to kind of experiment with, can't find it now. Okay, there we go. Uh, here at the bottom, you can see how I kind of tested mixing. This is a swatch of red 
ink diluted with water and here I've kind of mixed the red and gray and here I mixed uh, black and red so you can do that you can use them in a variety of ways but most of the time I use it you know just like this just by drawing uh, very uh, simple elements uh, and adding some kind of you know a bit of a bit of detail uh, so here for example red hair on these little these red haired ladies so that's kind of what I use it for uh, also uh, they're great for brush lettering I don't have any examples uh, in this sketchbook but I often use uh, brush pens for brush lettering although I haven't done that in a while so yeah I should take note of that uh, basically it's great and it comes in a variety of colors. It's not like a full palette, um, not like every, every shade under the sun, but they have maybe 10 or 12 different colors that you can use, uh, you know, the basic colors basically. And they are all intermixable and you can buy just the pure refills. Refill is this black part here. You unscrew it, you screw in a new one and it's, uh, it's pretty big. It's a pretty big barrel, so it does go a long way. I haven't tried uh, using any other off-brand ink in these, so I don't know uh, what would work, uh, but I suppose you could refill it with just plain uh, regular fountain pen ink, although it's probably a bit different than the ones that they're uh, making. I wish they came in bottled <laughs> inks, uh, because uh, that's also more eco-friendly and it would be it would probably be more cost effective but so far they're only creating these refills in these uh, kind of um, squishy plastic barrels the other tool on my list is watercolor and here you can see uh, this is a watercolor tube by Windsor and Newton and here I have like a whole palette uh, of different colors uh, but you can see that the red ones are getting a lot of love though I also have other watercolor palettes so this is not my only one I have another one where reds are almost completely um, empty because I tend to use them a lot uh, so basically I use watercolor in my actual artwork so that's uh, when I use like on big paintings on larger surfaces I tend to use the tubes because then you can easily create a, a larger mixture you know more more uh, mixture to cover larger areas but when I'm doing some stuff in my sketchbook or where I'm when I'm traveling I will usually usually take this portable watercolor kit with uh, my favorite colors and use that in my sketchbooks so I'm going to show you just some of my quick sketches like I do do like normal normal watercolor painting and uh, like more kind of arty stuff but here I'm going to just show you I usually use watercolor in more of these these kind of splotchy backgrounds when I want to create a kind of this um, diluted effect and it's recommended to use watercolor on thicker paper preferably on actual watercolor paper paper so this is uh, kind of hot press watercolor paper it's not super thick but it takes paint quite well and it granulates uh, quite nicely on this sort of paper uh, here on this page I have this little just an accent added to what is otherwise purely a black and white drawing with ink so that is sort of how I use watercolor in most of my uh, sketchbooks here I have like just a tiny doodle with brush pens and just a quick wash of watercolor I was doing that while drawing on the beach so usually when I'm somewhere traveling I will do these kind of smaller drawings this is another example of a kind of a quick watercolor sketch so this is just 
pure red and black and a bit of green here. And this is kind of a more colorful page with other colors as well. Uh, but usually I don't often use uh, watercolors like in my more art journaly pieces because uh, they tend to not work well over gesso or over uh, any kind of uh, acrylic paint. So they're not uh, very compatible with other forms of uh, paint. Uh, but if I'm using just um, ink and maybe some pencils and stuff like that, that I, I will probably use watercolor on a background. Although here the background is kind of mixed. It has also some other stuff that I'm going to mention in this video. But usually that is how I use it in my sketchbooks. Uh, mostly for larger areas to cover kind of the background or to make small studies of, you know, flowers and stuff like that. I also like to create kind of backgrounds for writing with watercolor. So here, uh, these are some journal pages, basically notes for my new book. And so I've used watercolor uh, to create these, these backgrounds that I am then writing on with other mediums. So this is also watercolor, but a bit more diluted. And this is uh, kind of more stronger watercolor. So I do tend to do that a lot as well. Uh, although this paper is not made for watercolor. So this is kind of a thinner sketchbook, but still I do kind of more uh, kind of drier, not as a watery, not as wet washes of watercolor. And the paper does buckle a little bit, but it's not too bad. You know, I don't really mind. It usually straightens out on its own while the sketchbook is closed. So that works as well. You know, when you look at it uh, this way, you can see that the papers are a tiny bit buckled uh, where I've used some sort of wet medium. Uh, but I don't mind. I think sketchbooks are meant to be used. Uh, they're not meant to be uh, kind of just uh, precious and, and looking all pretty. And if paper gets buckled a bit, yeah, that's fine. That's okay. Now, the tool that I've been using for the longest in my work, uh, like ever since I started drawing uh, in color in my late teenage years, uh, that's been watercolor pencil. You can see I have a whole range of these watercolor pencils from different companies. So here I have some Kohinoor which came uh, as a part of a set. So you can see this one is used quite a lot. Uh, they've been a favorite of mine and really affordable. Then I have these uh, Derwent uh, sticks, Aquatone. They are woodless pencils. So basically it's just the core, a thick core that you can, you know, layer uh, basically you can put it on a side and then create whiter strokes, though these are not as water soluble as these other ones. For some reason, it, it's really, uh, hard to get, a, like a very even wash out of them. They're kind of not my favorite ones. I use them in some of my earlier drawings, uh, but I stopped using them because I really find them kind of not as water soluble as some other, or companies and some other brands. Then I have some Creative Color Merino. Uh, I just like to buy, you know, buy and test different brands. Uh, and usually I will just buy a couple. So these ones, I only have a couple of shades. Oh, I don't have a whole set. And these, mm, I don't like them as much as I like uh, the other ones, the Kohinoor ones. This one is by Faber-Castell Color Grip. It's quite decent. Uh, and this is a Stabilo uh, All which is supposed to write on most surfaces, uh, but it's not very pigmented. It's not, it's not as strong as the other ones. And they, these are my favorite ones. Uh, basically this one I've been using the most. Uh, also one of more recent additions to my set, there went ink tents. So basically there's, um, it's not the same as watercolor pencil. Uh, watercolor pencils are rewettable. So you basically, you put them on dry on a piece of paper and then you wet them with a brush and kind of dilute them and get a more watercolory uh, blended effect. 
And then later on, as you're adding more layers or more colors, it's all going to mix together. It's go going to kind of uh, re-wet and reactivate every time you apply water on them. Whereas these ones are supposed to be water soluble, uh, uh, water, basically when you apply water for the first time, they're water soluble. But then as they dry, they're supposed to be waterproof. Although I would not say they're like 100% waterproof, they will kind of re-wet again a bit, but maybe they're just more, uh, they withstand re-wetting stronger than some other brands. So they're supposed to be uh, like, like ink, but you know, these things are not 100% water, waterproof, no matter what they say. But I like them not because they're supposedly waterproof, but because they are really strong. The colors are bright, pigmented. It's like none other watercolor pencil that I've ever tried. And this is why I, they quickly became my favorite ones. So mostly I just pretty much stopped using all these other ones. Although I'm, I'm sorry that I did because they all um, are valuable, but I might I just give them to someone else because obviously they're not doing me any good anymore. Uh, but these Inktense ones, they are actually now on my favorites list and I really recommend them uh, if you can get them. Also, I don't have a whole set. I only have uh, like uh, a few of these, a few, a couple of other in muted colors. Uh, and that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all that I'm working with. Now, why I use these, how I use this, I basically use them to add detail, but also sometimes I use them, for example, in this uh, journal page, all of these poppies are uh, drawn using watercolor pencil, specifically this Inktense pencil which is called poppy red so this is drawn with this pencil and then I went over it with water to kind of blend it so you can see that there is no white of the paper showing through anymore because as you uh, kind of smoosh the pigment around it covers up uh, the paper unlike colored pencil which always leaves a bit of white underneath and then I went over pencil with a pencil again, and then I added a bit of a darker shade. Um, I also have like a dark red, which is used for these shaded areas. And then also went over it with a wet brush to kind of blend it all together. So you get this soft effect, but also more precise than watercolor paint, because you can, you really add a pigment where you want to. It's not gonna just go all over the place, which tends to happen with watercolor paint. Uh, I also like adding, now where is that one? No, that's a different, aha, uh -huh, here um, on this page, uh, these little areas on the face, I've added using a watercolor pencil. And I think that was one of these. So it's a very pale pencil. It looks quite pale because this one is not as strongly pigmented as the Inktense one. But again, you can see it has all these little hairy details. Now I have a similar thing in this very old sketchbook. Now I shared this whole sketchbook in one of my, my first sketchbook tour, I think that I published in 2012 or something like that. It's a really old video. So this page here, is made using gouache, uh, white gouache and black gouache. And then the gray areas are mixed, a mix of black and white. And then these little viney details are all made using a watercolor pencil. I think it was probably this one, judging by the color. And then as I blended it with a wet brush, it kind of smooshed together with the gouache and created this very kind of pinkish fleshy color. So that works really well with gouache, uh, just mixing it with, uh, with any kind of water soluble basically is going to tint the wa uh, gouache and add the color, which, whichever color you are adding to it, it's going to kind of create this blendy effect. And I really like that 
for, for the details. Basically, that's what I use it for. Now, of course, there are many techniques that you can use with these pencils. I've seen people um, literally drop them in water and then draw them, draw really thick lines with them. I've seen people take a brush and then touch the tip of the wet brush to a pencil, then apply them as they would with watercolor. Basically, that's not really how I use them. If I'm going to use those, if I want to use a brush, then I'm just going to use watercolor, plain and simple. But uh, usually I will use this to add details to drawings or to sketch kind of small, small ideas for future artworks. If I want to add red details on something that I want to be painting in a larger scale later on, then usually I'm going to use a watercolor pencil for that. Uh, there's also another example here where the drawing is kind of black and white. And this area here is made with um, two different color watercolor pencils. So it's, I think those are one of the ink tense ones, I think probably this chili red and maybe the other one, the Shiraz, which is kind of a more the dark red burgundy color. So uh, that's basically how I use them. Uh, I know people use them in various different ways. Uh, but, you know, I like to take the best tool for the job, depending on what I'm doing. I'm not going to use them for everything and anything. I'm just going to pick something else if I need, uh, if I need to use like white, larger areas, I'm going to use watercolor paint. If I need to have a thicker application, I'm going to use something else, which I'm going to tell you about in a minute. But now let's see my other creative tool, which is acrylic paint. And here I have a couple of different tubes and jars. So this is, we might say like artist grade paint for uh, made by Windsor and Newton, which I use on canvas most of the time, but sometimes I also use them in my sketch sketchbooks. Although uh, these ones, when you apply them in a very thick layer, then they have a kind of a, a very slick surface. And the slick surface is not so great if you want to go over that with some other medium. So usually I'm going to use these more on, in my uh, acrylic paintings when I'm working on a, uh, something like an, a proper art project. But when I'm using acrylic paint in my sketchbook, I usually use these little hobby paints, uh, which are, both of these are matte. So this is more of an oh, kind of carmine red color or carmine. I don't know how you pronounce that. So this one is transparent and I'm going to show you what I did with that. And this one is more of a kind of basic red warm red, it's called brilliant red, which is supposed to be opaque. Although, you know what? It's not as opaque as I would expect. It's not, it's not covering perfectly the stuff that's underneath. Uh, but basically these are both matte paints. And what it means is that it gives a more kind of scratchy surface. So then I can use other mediums of, on top of that. And usually I use acrylic paint in my sketchbooks and art journals to create a larger area, which is like a background. So here, this entire spread was painted in red. So this was, there were some collaged pages underneath and I covered it all with this matte red paint. And then I, drew in these details and this back, uh, black background with water soluble crayons. So it's really great to uh, provide a support for other mediums like crayons or maybe pastel pencils and stuff like that. Uh, do I have something else here of that kind? Probably, but I'm going to check instead of that So here is just a splotch of this red paint 
and then I went over that with some crayons to create this drawing of a heart and this is really what I use the red paint for most of the time. So here I have like another kind of sketch notes page, some notes for my book. Also here is a kind of mix of a red and a more orangey color. And I have another, so these are, this is just prepared for some drawing that, that still hasn't happened. So uh, book pages covered in red paint. And I have another kind of red spread also just entirely covered with red paint. And then I drew over that with gel pens, with fountain pens. I did some kind of uh, adding these black dots with a sponge brush and so on. So that's why this craft matte paint is really good because it really adds a bit of support for the for the other stuff that you are maybe going to add to other pages. Uh, here on the cover of this sketchbook, all these details are painted with acrylic paint. Now the great thing about acrylic paint is that it is waterproof. So you can, whatever you do with that, you can touch it with your hands later and uh, nothing's gonna happen. Like it's, it just stays put and you can use it on other supports such as wood, cardboard, plastic, um, chipboard, whatever you have. Now here, this is, <laughs> this is still an, um, a page in progress that I've been working on for the past few days, just adding different things to it. So this is also a bit of acrylic paint here and there. Uh, and I have a, a lot of these pages where I've just added some paint as a first layer, one that it's finished. So here, just a, just a background for some doodles with a brush pen. And the last red art supply among my favorites that I want to show you today are these water soluble crayons. And I've talked about them already in my previous two videos. So I already I told you about the black ones. I told you about the white one. And these are a couple from different brands in color red. So this is a Stabilo Woody, which is actually like a kid's art brand although a bit more expensive for a kid's art supply. And these are the Neocolor 2. Now, I prefer these ones. Now that I had a bit more time to test them out, I found that Woody's have a very strong wax bloom, which means that once the crayons have been lying on the paper for a long time, the wax is going to rise to the surface and kind of create this white film on the, on the drawing. Now, I'll show you here. I had one page that uh, I did. So here, this used to be very bright red, uh, made with this uh, Stabilo Woody. And now it's a bit more dull because kind of this wax started coming, rising to the surface. And it's very, um, you know, it has dullened the drawing quite a lot. I have not found that to happen with these Neo colors. So I, I'm gonna stick to Neo colors from now on for most of my stuff. Now, I'm not gonna talk a lot about these crayons because I've mentioned them so many times before, but here it's, it's uh, how I use them is I basically, I tint the backgrounds. Although here I use them for the main motive, which is this butterfly. But here I have tinted the background um, which was covered with uh, glue. And then I uh, 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 activated them with water to create this film. And then I think I also may have added some more crayon and just blended it with paper because this surface is pretty smooth. So it's gonna blend with paper. Here we have a bit of a, just these tiny areas here where I also cover them with crayon to kind of make a stronger contest, contrast from the background. And I also have this little funky drawing here, which is drawn over black gesso. So black gesso, I've uh, talked about them in my 
video on favorite black art supplies. It's basically matte black surface that you can draw on or paint on with most things. <laughs> I'm going to say it's pretty, pretty versatile. And this is covered with red and a kind of pinky crayon to create these little tentacles and this eye. So you can see how opaque it is once you apply it in a very, very thick layer. So you can dilute them with water to create a more watercolory layer. Now, do I have something like that here? Hmm. Okay, so here, uh, this is an art journal page with that I painted with acrylics. So all of this gray gradient, it's drawn with acrylics and the little alien creature here was also painted with acrylics, but the red details I drew with water soluble crayon. So this is the kind of uh, watered down version of this. And here I have some softer and some strong, uh, some stronger areas uh, with also with diluted water soluble crayon or maybe smudged with fingers. I think here's something that I smudged. So you can get something from very subtle, very faint effects, you know, this barely, barely visible color which was kind of my point. I wanted to be a more gray drawing with just a hint of color here in some of the shadows. Uh, and yet here it is very strong and bright and colorful. And, and maybe, you know, if you look up really closely, you can see some black kind of peeking through these very, very small holes where the crayon didn't adhere completely. But I mean, it's pretty impressive that a, the crayon can create such a thick and opaque film. So that's really uh, how I like to use them. I like to create these little more uh, kind of a funky drawings, you know, maybe not something that I do typically uh, when I draw my real art, uh, quote unquote, but something to kind of have more fun and kind of experiment more and just get my fingers into it. So where is, oh, here is a, an example, you know, just these red blossoms also made over black gesso. And I forgot to show you something else I like to do with red paint. So these are some leaf prints made with acrylic paint. And this is something, I use some kind of a stencil here. I don't remember what I used, but something to paint this, these little edges. And here are negative prints, like um, the red is around this kind of leaf. So uh, this one has a ton of different stuff. I don't even know what, what I used. Uh, <laughs> probably some markers, probably some crayons. But here, this drawing is really all about the crayons. And another one I have... So here you can see a lot of different things. So there's red and orange crayons in the background. And then there is this red water soluble pencil and probably a bit of red water soluble crayon on these little details on these eyeballs. So I do tend to use them uh, together. Like for the little details, I'm gonna use the water soluble pencil for thicker lines where I want to go really opaque and really cover stuff, you know, especially if there's some uh, letters or, or some other texture underneath that I'm going to use crayons. And I'm also going to use crayons if I want to make some blended effect, which is what I did here, kind of blended it, smudged it with fingers. And if I want to have a very um, kind of opaque or um, a very uniform area, then I will use acrylic paint. And that is it from my red art supplies. I hope I didn't forget anything that I wanted to say, but in any case, I hope you enjoyed this video and the other two videos where I sh shared my favorite black art supplies and my favorite white art supplies. And I promise this is the last one. I'm not going to be doing any more on different colors because I think we covered that pretty much everything by now. I'm going to share links to some of these favorite art supplies of mine in the description and you will probably find them 
in your favorite color as well. And if you want to share your favorite colored art supplies with me, something that you like to use, please feel free to share it in the comments and maybe that will give me some ideas to try. And of course, I would love to hear how you use it, why you love this medium and not some other one. And, you know, let's keep the conversation going. Thanks for watching and bye-bye.